This is Hope and Health with Doctors Michelle and Mark Sherwood. Insights and interviews with a dose of straight talk to help you enjoy optimal health in all areas of life. Hey everyone, everyone. welcome to Hope and Health. We hope that you're enjoying yourself. We surely hope so. Uh, I'm Dr. Mark. And I'm Dr. Michelle. And they call us M&M. Without without the sugar. sugar, Of course, except this. Mm -hmm. We try to give you a little bit of sugar love. Right. So here's the thing. Um, We've been doing this life series for several um, weeks now. And I, I know it gets complicated, but let's go back and really revisit where we've been because we've been a long way. So we talk about the cells being the smallest unit of life, having the the cytoplasm or the border, the nucleus in the center. And then we have the cytoplasm or the membrane, I should say. And then cytoplasm is between the membrane and the nucleus. The jelly. The jelly, which has all your organelles, including of your mitochondria. So these cells, they manufacture proteins, which manufacture tissues, which make organs. And some of our, our, our tissues, which make up organs, are defined by their various functions, shapes, et cetera. So fascinating. So we talking about a lot of tissues before. Now we're going to talk about a tissue that many of you have heard about. It's called connective tissue. So we're going to begin our discussion tonight on this idea of connective tissue. And I think people are going to get a lot out of this because this is important to catch. A lot of times we look at this idea of connective tissue, we don't really register it as being inclusive of some of these things. So let's have a little look at all these connective tissues take, tonight. Take and a just brief look at that slide. All of those things there are connective components of these connective tissues. And those little black blobs there, those are actually cells within the connective tissue. Wow. So we are just nothing more than a ball of cells or trillions of cells put together to make up these things. So as we look at tissues, there's really six of the major types of tissues that we're going to discuss. So we're going to really talk about each of these as we go into our discussion uh, beginning tonight. Yes. And at the top of the list, we're going to talk about loose, ordinary connective tissue, adipose tissue. We all know that, that there's plenty of fluff around of blood and blood forming tissues, dense, ordinary connective tissue, cartilage, and then bones. So who would have thought that blood would be a connective tissue? But the bottom line is it really is. And so as we talk about these tissues, we're going to talk, first of all, about the adipose tissue and kind of talk about why that's connective because it really is. So as we talk about this adipose tissue, here we see this big blob of, well, yellowness, fatness. Yes, we do. And as we get older, we get less brown metabolic fat and more white, yellow tissue. And it's considered a connective tissue, even though it doesn't have fibroblasts or anything that makes up a real matrix. It only has a few fibers. And on that slide, it doesn't do a good job of showing you the fibers as the previous slide did. Adipose tissue is mainly composed of those circles that you see there called adipocytes. And those little dark blobs there, that's actually the nucleus of the cell. And adipocytes collect and store, they store triglycerides, which is a form of energy that can be used for metabolic function if the system doesn't have enough glycogen in the muscle or the liver to utilize as uh, the formation in the formation of sugar. So fat can and should be used in part as fuel and not stored in massive fuel tanks on the body. Well, adipose tissue mainly is going to be a protective covering. We have to have some covering for our visceral organs. Uh, Our brain is a form of fat, but it is not adipose tissue. There's a difference there. This adipose tissue is more of like a storage site uh, next to being a protective type of tissue. And obviously, because it doesn't really have a matrix and only a few fibers, it's uh, it's not as uh, structurally sound. And that's more, more jiggly. That's more jiggly. Are you telling me I'm jiggly? No, of course not. I'm not telling you you're jiggly. I would not do that ever. 
So this is adipose tissue. Again, it is a connective tissue. So kind of think like that. It's kind of crazy to think that it is. And next we talk about the different types of loose or even dense. So we're going to talk about loose first. There's, there's different types of this connective tissue. Adipose is one. Remember, now we're going to talk about this idea of loose connective tissue. Well, in the slide there, you can see how that tissue is loosely woven together. This loose connective tissue um, contains loose strands and cells. And these loose strands and cells are what are allowed to attach organs to one another. This type of tissue oftentimes is also referred to as areolar connective tissue. And it is the tissue that is right below the epidermis of your skin. So if you place your hand on top of your skin and you move your skin, you know, up and down or right and left, you can feel the, the, the firmness of how your skin connects to the underlying muscle tissue. Oftentimes people come into the office and go, oh, look how saggy my skin is. Well, it's other than the loss of the loose connective tissue that is right below the outer layer of the skin. The skin doesn't have something to attach to, does it? That's right. It's We're losing loose connective tissue. So when we think about losing loose connective tissue, we need to make sure we, we keep that, right? So the difference between loose and dense, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. Remember, loose connective tissue works to hold organs in place and is made up of this extracellular matrix and collagenous elastic and reticular fibers. So it has more ability to move. Dense connective tissue is what makes up tendons and ligaments. They're more firm and consist of a higher density of these collagen fibers. So that's the difference. So when we talk about loose, we want to think right below the skin and holding little organs in place where they can move a little bit because you can kind of move your organs around a little bit. They're not stuck there. But when you think about the dense, which we're going to talk about next, you think about tendons and ligaments. So you can see there's two different types of dense connective tissue. And you can, yes, to the left is dense and to the right is dense or regular. Dense connective tissue is one of the types of connective tissue that's also referred to as dense fibrous tissue because of its relative abundance of collagen fibers. It's enriched with collagen fibers and a little brown substance. And if it's closely packed in bundles, you can see them uh, flowing in one direction, like on the left there. So this is called dense regular connective tissue. If it's oriented in multiple directions, it's referred to as dense irregular connective tissue. Now, dense regular connective tissue is what is composing the majority of your tendons, your ligaments, and what, however, dense irregular tissue is more widely distributed throughout the body. The dense irregular connective tissue can be observed in the dermis of your skin and in the capsules of your organs, such as the spleen, the liver, and those actually that surround parts of the lymphatic ganglia. So there are also different types of fibers and cells that are housed in the different areas of this type of dense connective tissue. You could have loose connective tissue aligned and connected to dense connective tissue, both serving slightly different purposes, but both being connective in nature. So remember we have loose connective tissue, and then we have dense connective tissue, regular and irregular dense connective tissue. So really there's two subtypes within the uh, within the dense. So kind of keep that in mind, we talk about that. Now, we move um, from the connective tissue of the adipose tissue and the loose and the dense connective tissue, this thing called blood. A lot of people don't see blood as indeed a connective tissue, but oh, it really, really is. It really, really is. The blood itself being considered a connective tissue, it's got two basic reasons. One is embryologically, it has the same origin as other connective tissue types, and blood connects the body systems together, bringing needed oxygen, nutrients, 
hormones, and other signaling molecules, as well as removing waste. In circulating blood, two different types of cells are found, the red blood cells and the white blood cells. All right, and the red blood cells are called what? Erythrocytes. And the white blood cells are called what? Leukocytes. Yeah, the erythrocytes and the leukocytes are the red blood cells and white blood cells in the blood. So the blood has two different types of cells in it. So we know that. And, you know, again, when you think about this, um, think about erythrocytes, red blood cells carrying oxygen, right? And I think of leukocytes or white blood cells fighting your disease or your like warriors. Your military. Yeah, totally. And so we think about this idea of, uh, of blood, you know, being a carrier, it, it kind of blows your mind. But blood also has multiple functions that we'll talk about in just a second. So when you think about the multiple functions that we can have, man, these connective tissues. So we talked about adipose tissue. We talked about connective tissue, both loose and dense. And now we're talking about blood. Oh, my goodness. Speaking of blood, we're going to take a little bit of a break so you can go bleed. No, I'm just kidding you. <laughs> Don't do that. No, we want to take a quick break. And when you when we get back, we'll continue We'll continue our discussion on the shock media thing right there. It's called a shock line. It got you, didn't it? All right. So we'll be back shortly right after this uh, special message. This is absolutely not protein powder. This is Kingdom Fuel. Our complete nutritional shake mix. Kingdom Fuel provides a full spectrum of vitamins, minerals, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats to fuel your body, your life, so that you can enjoy health and peace of mind. Many people know about our clinic, but most don't realize we help patients around the globe reach their health goals. Deep down, you know there's got to be a way to get there, but you don't know where to start. Our starter plan is the first step. You'll get everything you need to experience a health transformation in 120 days. You'll start by resetting your health with a two-week detox. Then you'll implement our proven anti-inflammatory food plan. On top of this, you'll get a 120-day supply of essential supplements, omega-3, and vitamin DK, as well as our homeopathic drops to accelerate your health goals. Go to Sherwood.tv now and use promo code HOPEHEALTH to receive this exclusive offer and save a total of $80. This is your path to more energy and better health. Welcome back to Hope and Health. We hope that you're enjoying your time here with this life series. We've been talking about connective tissues. We have loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue, as regular and dense irregular connective tissue. And don't forget the adipose tissue. Those, oh, that those fat cells stuff. called adipocytes, you know, those ones that like are sort of kind of. Get, you know, you don't get more adipocytes. They just have the ability to get larger and larger and larger. I find that fascinating. Actually, it's almost like they're made out of eternal elastic. They'll get bigger and bigger the more junk you want to give them. Triglycerides get stored in, in adipocytes. That's why when you look at a blood test, you see high triglycerides. You're always going to correlate that, well, really, for the most part, to belly fat gain and belly fat retention. So that's driven by too many uh, carbohydrates many times, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. That's correct. So we're going to continue our uh, discussion on the idea of blood. And there was a lot we were talking about. We talked about the two different types of uh, cells within the blood, the erythrocytes and the leukocytes. The erythrocytes were the red blood cells and the leukocytes were the white blood cells. We talked about the red blood cells being carriers of really oxygen and some things. And white blood cells were the leukocytes being really your defenders or your military, but the blood has many, many functions, many. Uh, mainly if you look at it from five different angles, about five different good main functions. And the blood transports oxygen from your lungs to your body cells. Then it brings a waste product called carbon dioxide from the body back to the lungs, so you can exhale it when you expire your breath. Oxygen, as we know, is an essential ingredient in the aerobic cellular respiration that's Carried 
out in those cells in a human body. Remember, we talked about respiration in the mitochondria. We get that oxygen from the air we inhale, and the red blood cell transports this oxygen from the lungs to the rest of your body. Blood transports hormones, number two, throughout your body. Your endocrine glands, such as your pituitary, the adrenals, they secrete hormones into your bloodstream. Remember, like, kind of like emails, and which carries them to the body's organs. And the hormones are these messengers, those chemical messengers that regulate many of the body's functions. So as we digest food, the small intestines are going to absorb the nutrients that are in your blood. And these important molecules like sugar, glucose, amino acids, vitamins, minerals, fatty acids, actually help your body's cell survival and carry out their functions. So don't forget, good nutrition does a body good. It's carrying your bloodstream. Blood regulates body temperature. So when your body needs to get warm or cool down, the circulatory system plays an important role. And blood vessels in your skin can expand or contract to control how much blood actually comes to the skin surface. The expansion of the blood vessels brings the blood closer to the skin surface so he can be released to help cool your body. This is called vasodilation. So when you sweat, you would have more vasodilation so that the pores can open and, and cool the body down. And vasoconstriction will be exactly the opposite when the blood vessels actually contract, keeping blood further away from your skin surface to prevent heat loss. Oh. Kind of cool. Blood protects your body also from pathogens. We talked about those leukocytes, your white blood cells. They are the key players in your body's innate and adaptive immune responses. And some of the white blood cells are specialized to actually they engulf or they eat bacteria or other pathogens in a process called phagocytosis. And others have adopted to detect or tag particular pathogens for removal. So the immune system, the blood system is extremely intelligent. The third thing is that blood cells are produced within the bone marrow. And the bone marrow contains these things called hematopoietic stem cells or hemoblasts. And these cells uh, give rise to other cells that differentiate into the myelin white blood cells. And then there, there are five types of white blood cells, neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils, monophils, and then lymphocytes. And you see those on blood tests all the time. So when you're looking at normal things, it's called complete blood chemistry. You'll see those measured on there. So you will see ratios, et cetera, like that. And you can see the parts of red blood cells and the types of white blood cells. So you see this quite often. So, so know that uh, within the blood, it has a bunch of purposes. It is a connective tissue. The main two types of cells are the white blood cells, leukocytes, the red blood cells, erythrocytes. And so you saw the function we we're just talking about. There. So when you think about the blood, no more will you think about it just being an innocuous thing that flows through your veins. No, it has a, a lot of functions connective part. This blood clotting. Oh, right. It does cause blood clotting too. That's a big deal. Boy, that's a huge discussion these days in our world, isn't it? You know, what causes clots and all that. But we kind of look at that. Yeah. Clotting is a defensive mechanism. It's not an offensive thing. So if it if it responds to damage, hello, if it responds to damage, I, I get I'll say hello one more time. Maybe we need to work on creating less damage instead of be concerned about stopping our defense mechanisms such as clotting. That's a thought for the day right there. That, that's a good thought. So kind of think with us through that and don't get uh, all jammed up and get all weirded out on us or anything like that. So now we're going to look at this thing called cartilage. So we talked about adipose tissue, connective tissue, both loose and dense. And now we talked about the blood being connective tissue. And now we're going to introduce this idea of cartilage as being a connective tissue. Well, there you see on the slide, that's a really cool picture of cartilage. Cartilage is a specialized form of connective tissue that's produced by different fibroblasts, like you see um, a chondrocyte there in the matrix. Uh, that's a, a specialized type of fibroblast, and it's characterized by a prominent extracellular matrix consisting of various proportions of connective tissue fibers. 
embedded in a gel-like matrix. You can see that cartilage matrix on the slide there. Chondrocytes are located within lacuna in the matrix. So you see that there, that they have built around themselves. The individual lacuna may contain multiple cells deriving from a common progenitor. So coming from one, the lacuna are separated from one another as a result of a secretory type of activity of the chondrocytes. There are three types of cartilage that are classified according to the abundance of certain fibers and the characteristic of their matrix. The first is hyaline cartilage. It's uh, composed of mainly type two collagen. Then there's fibrocartilage. It's a high content of type one collagen. And then there's elastic cartilage, which is characterized by the presence of the abundance of elastic fibers and is quite cellular. It's made up of type two collagen and is located actually in the oracle of your ear and even in your epiglottis which is the thing that closes when you swallow to keep you from choking on food. Start thinking about the connective tissue, you think about, my goodness. So we've talked about this idea of uh, the blood and adipose tissue, can, this uh, loose connective and dense connective, and now we talked about cartilage. And let's go a little further into this one here, and this will probably be the, the final one we get to cover, and I, I would imagine this thing called bone. I mean, it, people don't think about it as a connective uh, tissue, but it really is. And we've talked about bone in some of our sessions before. Um, bone is, is a connective tissue that helps maintain the shape and the posture of your body and it protects your internal organs. It's rich in collagen fibers and calcium, which give it strength. The bone contains fibers and ground substance also. Now we know that the bones, there's a couple types of bone. Kinsella's bone, mm -hmm. the outer coating or covering of the bone, then that inner spongy bone that you're looking at there on the side called trabecular bone. Now, bone cells are of two types, osteoblasts, which build bone, and osteoclasts, which break bone down. Now, you want to have more osteoblastic or building type of activity than you want to have osteoclastic breaking down activity because too much breaking down of bone is called osteoporosis. And osteoporosis is a disease of frailty of the bone. So if you fall, you're more likely to end up with a fracture. When you think about the bones that being connected to you, Reminded of the series we did a while back on bones. So go back and visit that. Remember the nutrients that make bone? We got collagen. Yeah. We got uh, vitamin K, we got vitamin D, we got magnesium, we got calcium. And so what happens is the, the bone strontium, the bone is built and it's collagen scaffolding, you got calcium, phosphorus, and silica that are kind of hung on there. And then uh, the rest of them sort of direct calcium that way to help thicken the bone. And that's that osteoblastic activity. We know that the idea of osteoblastic activity is driven by uh, weight training and uh, hormone prevalence and things like that. So that's some good connective tissues, good place to stop and rest your bones right now a little bit before we get back to it next time here on Hope and Health. So we hope you're enjoying our life series. I know we are learning a lot. Hopefully you are learning a lot. There's a lot here to go back and revisit these series. Uh, we appreciate all of you joining yes, us. Yes, we do. Thank you for joining us. And we can't wait to see you next time. Doctors Mark and Michelle Sherwood and their clinic can help you find the hope and health you were created to enjoy. Go to Sherwood.tv for clear, proven ways you can be healthier. Subscribe at Sherwood.tv.